Hello, and welcome everyone to Wavefront's live webinar. Today, we are going to explore, in a fun Shakespearean fashion, logs versus metrics dilemma, and some of the best practices for monitoring your distributed cloud applications. My name is Stella Udovicic, and I'm responsible for Wavefront's product marketing. Prior to joining Wavefront, I focused on DevOps product marketing at Splunk. Today with me, I have Ian Smith, our applications engineer, whose expertise is rather deep in APM space. Prior to Wavefront, Ian works at New Relic. First, let me go over a couple of housekeeping items. After this webinar, we will do a drawing for Amazon's $50 gift card. We will notify four lucky winners via email. Next, if you have questions at any time, type them in the chat window. We will queue them up and open up for questions at the end of our webinar. This is a live webcast that is being recorded and we will send you the link afterwards. Our webinar will also be posted at our website at wavefront.com. Today's agenda is, first, we will shortly go over what is Wavefront, then help you understand what are some of the key differences between metrics and log analytics, and why should you care now. Then Ian will dive into a live demo, and then I will follow up with a customer case study at one of the largest energy providers in Europe. So let's dive in. Why Wavefront? Wavefront is a unified cloud analytics platform that provides insights into the performance of your applications, services, and infrastructure at scale. Our founders came from Google, Twitter, and PayPal, companies that dealt with performance and monitoring issues at unprecedented scale. These hyperscale companies developed their internal monitoring systems to solve unique visibility challenges that are very different from monitoring just a handful of hosts and traditional apps. Inspired by these tools, our founders created Wavefront three years ago. Wavefront platform collects metrics, numeric data from your distributed cloud applications, your hosts, your containers, overall infrastructure, even business data. To collect this information, you deploy a lightweight agent that sends metrics to Wavefront Unify Metric Store in the cloud. You can use an open source agent or Wavefront agent. And once the data is in Wavefront, you can apply analytics in the form of Wavefront query language and start truly understanding behavior of your distributed applications at scale. One of the unique things to metrics analytics is holistic visibility across all your services. You can create smart alerts, start trending on groups of services, detect anomalies across your entire service environment proactively. Another beauty of metrics as numbers is that Wavefront does not discard your metrics. In other words, we retain your metrics forever. This helps you take advantage of moving time windows to optimize your seasonal analysis. For a customer Yammer, now Microsoft, Wavefront has about three years of stored metrics. Other Cloud Ops, Operations, and other innovative um, companies such as Lyft, Workday, and Intuit are using Wavefront. At Workday, about 1,000 developers are using Wavefront as their self-service metrics platform. Finally, you can use Wavefront API and integrate with your existing tools and applications. So why the metrics versus logs dilemma now? There are several critical developments in the industry, and those are to do with digital enterprise growth. As more organizations are relying on customer-facing applications for their direct business revenue, it is more important than ever to get continuous insight into reliability and SLAs of your distributed services. Application delivery is becoming more complex, more dynamic, and your code base is constantly growing. And as microservices and containers lead to fragmentation as well as agility, you have the need for more measurement and instrumentation points in your distributed environment. You want to monitor your, your environment in such a fashion 
where adding 100 more metrics would not lead to a disk full an hour later, as some of our customers that moved to Wayfront initially saw with an open source metrics tooling. Another important aspect to fragmentation is that your window to react, remediate, and rebuild code is getting shorter. As you're developing and pushing code to production continuously, you cannot wait an hour or more to get insights from your applications as we're seeing in some of the traditional analytics methods. Within that hour, all customers may have already experienced an outage. All that leads to the third important reason why the dilemma now. And that is the human sharing and working off of the same views is paramount. To rebuild the code, developers must have the same view as the cloud ops who initially observed an anomaly, or they can even be empowered with self-service analytics. This collaborative sharing helps continuous software delivery wheels spin without any issues. So let me start with some basics before we dive into more comparative analysis as there still could be a confusion when it comes to separation from metrics from logs. Metric is a number that describes the measurement of a variable in time. In our wavefront metric format, you have the name of the measured variable, the value of measurement, the time of measurement, as is described by the timestamp. You also have the source, which refers to where you're measuring, as well as tags, which help you organize your metrics. Tags can refer to container ID, to port ID, or others. Because metrics are essentially numbers, they are perfect for applying aggregations and mathematical transformations to them. One simple metric is a count of errors or fail logins, while more complex ones deal with distributions. And where, where do metrics come from? They can come from your code instrumentation or your infrastructure components measurements, such as EC2, your network traffic, other systems such as Puppet or Chef, or even logs, as we will see later. At the very high level, you can group metrics into overall performance, application, and infrastructure or business metrics. Let me talk about logs now. First, Logs typically refer to text records that describe discrete events that happened. Logs analysis deal with connected lists of information. They are descriptive in nature, and they are meant to convey as much information as possible. There are many kinds of logs. IT teams have been using logging to navigate to the problematic piece of infrastructure, such as failed disks or a network incident, for a very long time. There are also many different types of log formats. Some are standardized, such as your syslog, and some custom, like your common application log, that can vary in the levels of verbosity. For logs, you can have several logs that describe a single event. And now, here are several metrics types that are supported in Wavefront. Those are counters, gauges, histograms. While counters and gauges are self explanatory, histograms are very important. Histograms help you efficiently ingest and analyze aggregated measurements and sub-second data distributions. For example, you can use histograms to measure performance and distribution of your web request latencies across multiple servers. In particular, if you are dealing with the need of sub-second response time. I want to also mention that on top of metrics, you can run away from query language, which helps you customize metrics to your own unique applications and infrastructure environments. Logs can also be aggregated, but first you have to parse them, process them, shape them to figure out schema. And next, let's explore some of the main differences and similarities between logs and metrics. First, both types can be used for driving actionable insights, and both are searchable. Both have dedicated tools that are architecturally optimized for monitoring one or the other. 
Due to high compression, metrics can be stored, processed, and retrieved at a fraction of a cost compared to logs. Millions of points per second of ingestion and instant visualization is not uncommon with, with metrics. We see that our customers typically use metrics to get a wide sweeping view across their sets of services. You can use metrics to alert on aggregated behavior in the first pane of glass type of analysis. When it comes to logs, they are meant to provide a very deep insight into a silo and as typically generated after the incident, they are optimized for forensic type of analysis after the fact. You can analyze logs with solutions such as uh, Splunk or Sumo in commercial space, or you can use ELK stack in open source space. When it comes to metric space, you can use, of course, Wavefront, Nagios, Graphite, or other tools. So now the next question really is, when would you use metrics and when log analytics, in particular for your applications at scale? Metrics are great to use when performing iterative investigation across the entire distributed services footprint. It is easy to imagine the following scenario describing using metrics for a critical service monitoring such as Workday's payroll and HR services. Workday is a wavefront customer. Imagine having a delay in your wage payout due to an outage, or even worse, that you are buying a home and you need your mortgage lender to approve the loan as you just heard that interest rates will rise this week. But you cannot get your loan approved quickly as you cannot access your recent paycheck due to an outage. Using the speed of metrics, the DevOps team can see an early indicator of an anomaly starting in just a couple of hosts. Using Wavefront's moving window, they can spot a seasonal anomaly that happened last quarter at the same time, which exhibited as significant latency of a portion of their distributed application. With aggregated views delivered from metrics, they can quickly isolate system level anomaly and zero in on infrastructure zone that is affected. To prevent this issue from reoccurring, their DevOps team can create an alert that fires on the earliest indication of this type of the incident next time. On the other hand, their team may not particularly care if just a small percentage of their servers are running hot when the overall service is healthy. Due to their small form, metrics are a fantastic option when you're running many microservices and many containers. Say you have a number of containers and you collect typically 10 metrics per container, and as we see, your code bases grow all the time. Your measurement points can start easily inflating. You want to use metrics platform for this type of analysis because adding 100 and even 1,000 more metrics will not cost you an extra penalty in processing costs or time to visualize. Wavefront development teams are actively contributing to containers projects such as Heapster. Using metrics, you can, use, you can use metrics when you're doing continuous delivery with many code updates. Take example of UShip, a use case we recently featured in our blog post. UShip deploys code many times per day. Before deploying Wavefront, they had months before they figured out which part of their environment misbehaved. They used open source tooling which forced them to try a crystal ball type of approach in predicting what will fail next. Within 10 minutes away from deployment, they spotted system anomaly due to not enough server capacity they did not even know about. When it comes to logs, as they contain descriptive and verbose detailed information, they're a fantastic option when you have to go dive deeper into a particular silo to understand an issue, for example, where a particular server or switch misbehaves. After something happens, logs will give you a wealth of information so that you can go and debug the issue. They are particularly useful when you have enough time to troubleshoot and isolate the problem. They are also very useful in security level in investigation. 
So even though in many, many cases you do need a specialized metrics or log monitoring tool, to take true advantage of architectural and even cost of optimization, we are seeing that a number of our customers are starting to create metrics from logs. They have several reasons for creating metrics from logs. First, they want to take advantage of speed and cost processing when they already had log collection in place. As you will see in the demo and the case study later, when you create metrics from logs, you can start alerting on a holistic behavior of your entire environment. Another aspect that prompts our customers to create metrics from logs is a long-term retention of many metrics is way more cost efficient than storing logs. And that is why we have added this functionality into our Wavefront platform. Now let me highlight several key benefits of creating metrics from logs. First, you can understand the performance of your applications and um, infrastructure at a high scale and detect anomalies across everything. In a typical cloud environment, when dynamics of application change so frequently, you want to monitor the system level behavior. That is the beauty of converting logs to metrics. You can even alert on the volume of logs itself to care, take care of your logging costs. And talking about costs, secondly, the comparable information stored in logs will cost you up to 10 times more in processing and storage. Metrics are extremely cheap to store and process. Assume you have to analyze and trend several months worth of data to understand that spike that occurred in your environment. If you have to wait to, for your tools to crunch the data until you come back from lunch, well, you're not really iterating quickly as it is required in a true continuous delivery mode. Unified alerts and metrics can help you spot the very glimpse of something going wrong before it develops into the full OSH T type of trouble. Metrics help you notice and alert on sudden behavior change across everything, even though your customers are not affected yet. And then you only have one integration point with your other tools in your continuous delivery uh, tool chain. You have one hip chat or pager duty notification to start that collaborative sharing. With this, let me turn to Ian, who will go over how you can actually use Wavefront to create logs from metrics, and Ian will also perform a live demo. Thanks, Stella. So today I want to step you through the practical implications of ingesting metrics from your log data. To start with, there are multiple ways for you to collect metrics from your logs. We ourselves provide a couple of approaches for those who may not have existing metrics pipelines to take advantage of. The next two slides cover these. For a lot of customers who are already using a central log monitoring solution, you will have the ability to forward your raw logs from that system via TCP. The Wavefront proxy is able to receive that raw data stream directly and process the log lines into metrics within your environment. A good example of where this is applicable would be Splunk, which supports and provides documentation for forwarding to a third-party system like Wavefront. The level of configuration external to Wavefront is minimal, with all the passing definitions embedded within the Wavefront components. As you can see here, your log data would be emitted from your existing log processing nodes, which may be collecting data from many dozens or hundreds more applications, servers, or other types of devices in the environment. This data would be received by the Wavefront proxy, processed using the definitions I'll cover a little later, and then recorded to the Wavefront backend as abstracted metrics. Alternatively, you may want to use FileBeat, a tool from Elastic, to gather and send data from your logging nodes to Wavefront. This method does record a state, allowing it to recover accurately in the event of an unexpected shutdown. As with the first direct socket method on the previous slide, the actual metric definitions are configured at the Wavefront proxy, so there is consistency in how you write your processing rules across both methods. 
This type of deployment may lend itself more to an environment which does not yet have a centralized logging repository and you want to pull individual log files servers or other devices without setting up log specific infrastructure. In addition to the methods outlined on these two slides, because Wavefront integrates seamlessly with open source common tools like Graphite, Telegraph and others, you can use their log processing components or plugins to send metrics into Wavefront. This would allow you to make use of your existing investment in data gathering with those tool sets while leveraging Wavefront's advanced functionality. Now I want to touch a little on Wavefront's involvement in the processing of the data, again within your environment. If you're using either of the two main methods I outlined in the previous slides, you define the rules for how the logs turn into metrics within the Wavefront proxies configuration. The rules are built around Grok, a language for defining patterns. You can see here an example of Grok syntax used in the probably be used to using regex. Grok is a little friendlier and allows you to build your definitions with reusable pattern components. Some advantages of the way we're handling this log data are worth noting. You can define the granularity or interval that your log data is recorded into your metric. For example, you may want to know the number of errors occurring every five seconds rather than every five minutes. On the other hand, you may only care about the total number of slow jobs processed every 10 minutes rather than every five seconds. All of your raw log data, including those pesky PII elements, stay within your environment. Metrics aren't going to capture your customers' credit cards, email addresses, or other sensitive data. Additionally, because the processing of this happens within your network, our storage of your metric data is much smaller than the equivalent log data. In the same way, once we abstract our metrics, the bandwidth consumed by sending those to the Wavefront backend is going to be quite small. So now I'm going to swap over to the demo. Once you've defined your metric and brought the data into Wavefront, you'll have access to the full suite of functionality Wavefront has to offer. Because we've derived or abstracted a metric from the log data, you aren't operating on it as a second class data type. On top of analyzing the data in isolation, you can monitor and trend on the behavior of your systems as a whole, rather than just individual components. This is essential when monitoring the health of modern, complex, distributed applications and their environments. Having all of these metrics and the connected alerting in one location reduces the overhead of scheduling maintenance windows and configuring interfaces into other tools. As Stella mentioned before, one of the key differentiators of our metrics platform is retention at full granularity. With this data, I can extend my view out to one year or more and zoom into any given minute or even narrower. Because metrics can be considered a very compressed data form, they're very cheap to store and efficient to query for analysis versus raw data like logs. Wavefront allows you to seamlessly move backwards and forwards within your data and manipulate your view from something like an average representation to a maximum. This allows us within this data set to find a spike in April and drill down very specifically. Note how fast the exploration of the data is. As metrics are essentially numbers, we can offer a very powerful set of functions to analyze them, giving you the power to do things like seasonal comparison with just a few keystrokes. This query language is fully accessible to your alerting needs as well allowing you to go beyond simple thresholds and build alerts around your data's complex behavior. Now that I've talked a little about what you can do with direct data manipulation in Wavefront, let me show you how you can apply our functionality against a bigger data set in a real world scenario. I've preloaded this environment with data from application server error logs alongside metrics from my infrastructure, network and applications. Just like the logs, some of this data has come from other tools like an APM solution and some of it has been gathered directly into Wavefront. Our log data is now part of that wider pool, so if we see a problem in another metric and is correlated with our log data, 
will be able to note those connected anomalies and act accordingly. Here we can see a significant drop in our key performance indicator in transactions per second. A little exploration of that data via pre-built dashboard functions means that we can isolate it to say a particular app server. In this case, app server five. Rather than have to jump into each monitoring tool in our arsenal that could potentially touch app server five, including logs, APM, network monitoring, etc., we have data from all of those data sets available here. A simple moving correlation allows us to match the behavior of our transaction rate against other metrics in our environment. We'll be able to note that the memory and GC are a, memory, a mirror of each other and strongly correlated to our transaction rate. And that our error rate taken from our logs is also quite relevant. As our data in Wavefront is an abstraction of what is stored in our logs, we also want a way to link back to our log tool for further analysis. With Wavefront's external links, we can build a dynamic link that ties context from your exploration in this type of dashboard and drops you into other tools like Splunk. So now we're looking at logs for our App Server 5 and we're looking at exactly the same time window. We can take advantage of this tool's particular strengths, as Stella mentioned before, deep dive, troubleshooting, and diagnosis, and the granularity of the log lines, confident that we're looking at the right tool, right data, to solve a problem that we were alerted to in a connected system and data set. These external links can be configured to drill into any web application and use wavefront variables like time window and source to capture the relevant view in the target application. Now back to you, Stella. Thank you very much, Ian, uh, for this uh, live uh, demo. And in the next uh, part of the presentation, I will first go over a case study and then uh, share with you a couple of real life screenshots of one of our customers' um, use case. So with that, uh, let me move, um, just one second. Okay, so with that, let me move to the next um, slide. So this is a case study coming from British Gas. It's, it's one of the largest European energy suppliers, and they're serving around 12 million homes in UK. Uh, British Gas customers get many energy and connected home services that help them control a range of internet-connected devices, from smart meters down to sensors. To monitoring, they also monitor cloud applications and um, deliver infrastructure and deliver these services. They, they, they are used over several hundred operations and development engineers use Wavefront. Their operations team moves from graphite to Wavefront due to restri restrictive scaling issues they had when they're open source tooling. And here are some of the key benefits they're getting from metrics. Their cloud ops team can understand the behavior of all hosts and cloud applications offering these services. They can easily notice trends and aggregated error views. They're able to get insight into business performance as well and fluctuating number of their IoT connections across their environment. Their executive team is looking into metrics to understand business KPIs relative to cloud applications and host behavior. They can also understand compliance as their security tools are integrated with Wavefront and they're sending data to our metrics platform. British Gas operations team is creating metrics from logs that are coming from the, their existing Elastic Elk stack instrumentation. They're generating valuable metrics their logging tool cannot handle at scale or is it too costly. They also needed to understand trends from their logging patterns. For example, if they see a sudden spike in the logging volume their applications and infrastructure are exhibiting, it is an early precursor of a potential incident. At British Gas, they are predominantly concerned about what their users are seeing or experiencing and alerting on that and not on some infrastructure zones running hot. 
They are also using Wavefront to uh, alert on aggregate volume of logs so they can keep their costs under control. They also have a product that have an Nginx API, and they're monitoring the performance of that product and measuring latency ac across various elements, as you will see in the screenshots later. Their operations team use metrics to keep tabs on unauthorized configuration changes. Their config management tool of choice is Puppet. They are using metrics to monitor how long are their puppets run. Also, they can alert if there is a configuration deployment or change, but say no new code is actually being pushed. That is the reason to start the investigation. Another example of aggregated security is example of aggregated security notifications, and they're even sending their auth info messages into Wavefront to plot every single point when someone tries to brute force into their system. So in the next uh, couple of screenshots, you can see the real life use case and simplify example of creating metrics from logs. It is inspired by Nginx API latency measurement I talked about earlier at British Gas. This use case is delivered to you today by a courtesy of Rob Fisher, who works uh, on British Gas SRE team. You can follow his blog and try Wavefront yourself in a similar way, as he de describes his, his um, demo in, uh, in a great detail you know, in the link that I will share with you shortly. And here, Wavefront is being used to help you troubleshoot if Nginx is the true cause of your application latency. We are using Nginx logging converted into metrics to monitor how his four production websites perform under increased load. After metrics are created from logs, he used Wavefront to plot the rate of his HTTP 200 request. Next, for those plotted requests across four servers, he's using Wavefront to plot the latency behavior. He is looking at total response times as well as upstream response times. One can easily and instantly observe that one of the boxes, SysDAF, which actually is a very tiny system, is exhibiting a spike in delay compared to the box called Casingle, which does not exhibit any changes under increased load. Finally, simply by plotting the difference, between total and upstream time, one can see that the time is being spent upstream that is in his Ruby application. This spike helps explain the response time latency observer earlier as SysDAF is a dynamic site doing some amount of processing and requiring disk access. On the other hand, his casingle only renders some basic markdown and keeps pretty much all its content cached in memory. So the conclusion is that his engine axes are performing just fine. The best performance is definitely some other problem and possibly an application issue. Please check out the entire blog post posted by Rob Fisher at the link at the bottom of the corner and try this use case yourself. So to summarize, uh, using specialized and architecturally optimized tooling for metrics and for logs, will give you the most operational and cost advantages. Use Wavefront's metrics pattern to get a holistic view, speed, and scale required in today's digital enterprise where software complexity and code base is growing rapidly. Finally, if you already invested in logs throughout your environment and you want to protect your ROI and get a unified speed and scale of metrics, use Wavefront and create metrics from log. With that, we will open up for questions we received in the chat window. If we don't get to your question in time, we will contact you after the webinar. We will also must notify four lucky winners of $50 Amazon gift cards. And now our first question um, is, how are metrics gathered? Do you have an agent? Sure, I'll take that one. 
So aside from the Wavefront proxy, which is a lightweight Java application which does deploy in your environment, we don't have a specific agent itself. But the proxy is there to serve as uh, an open connector effectively to our backend. That you can write many different uh, formats, data formats too, including, as I mentioned before, uh, various uh, open source metric systems which have a plethora of plugins and existing tooling uh, to gather data from your environment. Our next question is, are metrics derived from blogs available in today Wavefront proxy version? Uh, I'll take this one. Uh, creating metrics from logs is available from Wavefront uh, 4.4 proxy. Log linking is available from Wavefront 5.0. Um, this next question, Ian, may be for you. I don't have ELK uh, nor Splunk. Can I still con uh, convert logs to metrics? Absolutely. Uh, so the two methods that we outlined earlier, um, they can absolutely be applied pretty generically. In particular, uh, if you uh, don't have any kind of setup already, as I mentioned before, FileBeat can be used to just grab uh, existing met uh, logs that are just sitting in a directory somewhere being written out by, say, an application or the operating system. Um, and it's a fairly lightweight kind of setup. So Ian, do you want to take do you want to take the next one? Um, I think the next one deals with on-premises question. Yeah. yeah, sure. So we don't have an on-prem deployment for the Wavefront backend. Uh, Wavefront is a SaaS solution. It means that you can keep your costs down, and you don't need to obviously exert a lot of effort in terms of deploying and maintaining that. We do all of that for you. Um, and then ultimately, you know, the there is a small component which is deployed uh, on-prem, which I mentioned before, the Wavefront proxy. Um, you mentioned dashboard linking connection to uh, Splunk or Elk stack. Um, just one second. How does it work with other systems? So yes, as uh, I mentioned earlier, dashboard uh, linking is generic, and you can link any two windows. You can go even from Wavefront window into another Wavefront window, or if you had said, it, say, in the example below, in the example I mentioned, if you already had Puppet, you can go directly from Wavefront into Puppet. Um, Ian, maybe you want to take next one. Uh, so, what type of analysis can I do on wave data once it's in Wavefront? Um, so, because everything is a metric, uh, you basically can get access to a whole set of about 150 pre-built functions uh, that can do a whole bunch of uh, typical math-related analysis on those metrics or manipulation of them. Um, it's worth noting that we, we do go beyond you know, analysis in terms of filtering. It actually allows you to manipulate the data um, or do complex analysis you don't typically get in packages. So um, commonly a lot of customers will do things like build alerts around behavior that use standard deviation or interquartile range, just as an example. And of course you can data chain a lot of these things together uh, you know, out of those 150 functions um, using some of the alias functions as well. So we have customers that say have built very complex formulas to analyze their data particular to their business, um, you know, a couple of lines or, or more, um, and they're able to do that very reproducibly using the aliasing functions that we have there as well. Uh, so we also have another question. So what kinds of strong points does the Wavefront service have uh, compared with present monitoring functions that operating systems have? So your typical operating system functions, uh, you know, whether it's Linux or Windows, uh, or even if you're in the cloud, you'll have some basic uh, monitoring. Uh, we will typically have a superset because we'll obviously be able to gather the metrics that are surfaced up by the operating system, but be able to gather things that go a lot deeper or maybe require API access, uh, depending on the operating system, as well as uh, all the different types of technologies that we already uh, integrate with, including pretty much all of the industry standard open source tooling. Um, we also do have integrations with a number of other uh, components, including certain APM solutions. So you'll definitely be able to go significantly beyond what you might see in, say, a task manager or uh, you know, a typical um, OS monitoring tool that you might have there. Uh, so let me take this next one. Um, is um, I'm concerned about privacy laws that protect my cloud application data. Yes, uh, we have heard about similar concerns uh, from some of our EMEA customers. And in fact, British Gas is a utility provider. They are subject to government uh, privacy regulations. As, as we mentioned a little bit, Wavefront is a metrics 
platform. And um, during the demo, Ian mentioned that we don't store any personal identification data or PIIs. And if you want to correlate which metric refers to the PII, you can, um, you can actually um, use tagging function to make your correlation. Uh, so the next one, um, maybe, well, Ian, if you can take this one. Yeah, sure. So there's a question here. Uh, can you touch on the use cases for developers instrumenting their code for metrics and the downstream, such as DevOps, advantages? So uh, depending on the side of the fence you're on, you know, the, a lot of developers don't like going into instrument stuff without understanding the value. So it's a really good, good way of uh, approaching it. Obviously, DevOps, you're, you're really focused on keeping things up and operational. Um, developers sometimes don't necessarily have uh, that, that focus. But we do have you know, support for uh, some really good libraries um, that allow you to uh, instrument your code very easily, so you might be familiar with things like Drop Wizard. And then most importantly, once that's been done and the metrics are reporting in, you can use Wavefront to self-service uh, for your wider organization. So your developers can get in, start building their own stuff. And developers really tend to uh, uh, be very very comfortable with the, the query language and the, the technical capabilities of the system. Um, doing that and taking that approach um, oftentimes does lead to those advantages where your know, DevOps does get uh, significantly higher visibility into what's happening. Um, they get better engagement. And ultimately what we see at companies like uh, Intuit and, and Workday is that we start small where people um, you know, pick this up and run with it, say, in a POC environment, and it spreads very rapidly because of the power and flexibility uh, and insight that you're able to get, particularly um, crossing over that operations and developer divide. Um, so there's another one which I can take on. Uh, what types of Wavefront query language functions can I apply on histograms? Well, to query histogram metrics, we have a special histogram function, HS, where you can get insight into min or max aggregated over a minute, or you can look at 19th percentile. Uh, we have a question about um, alert aggregation. There's not a whole lot of context, but um, you know, Wavefront has very sophisticated alerting uh, in the sense that you're not just setting a basic threshold um, and you're not just setting um, one condition. It's very possible to, for example, set very complex behavioral uh, conditions and multiple of those, stringing them together, and then ultimately just offering up the one alert so you don't get that alert fatigue where, you know, I want to check 16 different facets of the way my application might be performing poorly, but I don't want to get 16 different alerts when things really start going down. And I missed the 17th one, which indicates an entirely separate other problem is happening there. Um, so there's definitely an area that uh, we excel at, and uh, the flexibility of being able to build your alerts using the query language really offers up um, a, a, a lot of depth there. So let me, um, let me address this, and this next question is um, similar to alerting. The question was, can I use Wavefront to alert on top of my ALP data? Um, yes, yes, you can. Uh, when you convert logs to metrics, as Ian explained, in two different, uh, using file beats one way, uh, you, can, you can set up any alerts or smart alerts. We have heard, um, for example, from our customers that there are some limitations offered by Amazon Kibana service. So um, as uh, one of the other customer uh, case study I mentioned, um, they're actually using Wavefront to alert uh, off of their app uh, stack and even look at trends on application logs that are generated in their app stack. So th as soon as they see the amount of logging that spikes up, it may be an early sign that something is um, not functioning correct. Sure. So there is another one. Uh, that, that one's fairly straightforward. Um, how can I try away from? Uh, well, you can. Uh, we see you see several uh, links here posted. The easiest way either to contact us or to go through um, get started. Yeah. So another question: How does Wavefront differ from App Dynamics uh, or New Relic? Um, just generally, I guess, APM tools. APM tools tend to be very focused in on the, the low level. Uh, how do I fix my problem once I know where it is? Uh, they're very focused in on gathering uh, data, uh, you know, 
automatically from applications which can be quite heavyweight. Uh, particularly if you've gone and you have your uh, monitoring infrastructure geared around lots of other different components, you often can't bring that data into either of those platforms or any of their other competitors. And so we, what we excel at is not being specific to an APM solution, not being specific to a logging solution or anything like that, but we can pull data from all of those. And you're able to basically lay a wavefront on top and act as a first pane of glass, not a single pane of glass because that's all things to all people, um, but uh, be that, that first pane of glass where you can see representative data from all of those different systems and then as I showed you with the, the Splunk example, uh, move with confidence into that system for a deeper dive, uh, diagnosis or troubleshooting. So this looks like um, most of our questions. If we, uh, for any reason, we did not see your question, um, or uh, if you want to contact us again, contact windows are, uh, contact uh, information is on our screen now. Thank you very much for listening to today's webcast. Until our next webinar, try Wavefront or contact us. This concludes our today's webinar. Thank you very much uh, for listening.